Hey guys, so I wanted to apologize first of all for the screw up on episode four originally that went out with no audio. I have no idea what happened. Uh, so I took my episode five, put it up in episode four's place. So we did miss a couple of games, but we went over that last episode. I was going through and I remember what the tip was. So we will cover that today. So look for that. And I'm going to go be hitting some games. So let's get right into it. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Bullbound College Football, Episode 5 of our Journeyman Save. All right, let's get into it. I've already gone ahead and moved two weeks into the future, uh, So, and we're going to talk about the tip in Week 9. But let's go back and revisit Week 7. And you can see we got our first victory of the season, 13-10 to 10 over Troy. And uh, we were dead even on first downs. 364 yards of total offense, 123 yards on the ground, 261 yards in the air, 23 out of 42 passing. Now remember, last episode, if you did not see it or if you forgot, we tweaked our lineup a little bit to where we were using both quarterbacks, but we had one quarterback going as our primary guy and then a second quarterback going as our short yardage guy. And the reason was is that short yardage guy had a lot better running ability, and we had some running plays in the playbook that we decided that we went with last episode. And so let's get into it and see how that worked out. Well, first off, you can see we had two field goals. Uh, Craig Scott, uh, running back, a seven yard run, and then uh, Troy came back with uh, ten unanswered points. So we held on. Not a great game, but a win's a win, right? Uh, looking at Williams, he is our primary quarterback, 23 out of 41, uh, 261 yards. Faust, the short yardage running back, 0 for 1 passing, but you can see two carries for 39 yards, a long of 22, and a 19 and a half yard average. So, you know, that's something we can look at doing. If we look at Faust, he has a durability of 77. So what we could do is we could tweak it a little bit and go with not a wishbone per se, but an option style, run heavy, using our running back, but then a lot of running plays for the quarterback and basically ha and set it to a very high run percentage. So that's an option. Um, I like to throw the ball, so I'm not going to do that, but I will utilize that uh, if it makes sense. And we can see that we are getting a little pop. Now, 19 yards of carry, maybe we ought to be doing a little more. We can certainly look at it. Moving up to week eight, another win, 24-7 to over Arkansas State. And this one, we got a 56-yard fumble return by Richard Diaz on the defense to get out to a 7-0 lead. They equalized in the third quarter. Uh, then Carlos Williams got his touchdown pass, uh, 28 yards to Mitchell Parker. We did pick up another means field goal, and then Williams to Parker again for 41 yards. So a couple of pass plays uh, looking good, and a couple of good pass, but, you know, plus yardage, 20 or more yards. That's solid. Uh, more first downs. First time I think that we've seen that all season. 362 to 282 in the yardage. We did get out rushed 179 to 101, but 18 of 34 passing, just over 50%, just on the positive side. I'd like to be closer to 60 or 70% myself, but really we don't have the quarterback to do that right now. But uh, 18 of 34, 7.7 .7 yards per pass, 261 yards, just the one interception, sacked three times. And if we take a look, we were three of three on extra points, one of two on field goals, perfect in the red zone, but only one trip into the red zone. Uh, Williams, 16 of 31, two touchdowns and a pick. Faust, two of three in this one. And you can see Faust did not have any running attempts, but Williams did six for eight. 
So this is the drawback of the playbook. And we'll, we can look at this a little bit too here in just a second. But you can see Williams is the one getting the all the carries in this one. And it's all because of just how the game progresses when the plays are called. And that's really randomized, right? But the good news, two wins in a row. We're now two and two in conference, two and five overall. If we take a look at our standings, we are now mid-table, or mid-table, I'm going back to football manager, uh, but we are uh, middle uh, of the pack in the standings, two and two overall. We actually have a plus score ratio, 67 points for, 55 against, two and five overall. So, uh, you know, still not a great season, but um, seven games in, five to play, we need four wins to get to six. That's what we're shooting for. All right, so let's take a look. Here's the tip. Testing, testing. Making sure the audio is working again. <laughs> All right, so here's the tip. We have the weeks during the season. It's not every week, but during the season, you will have these weeks to add your study hours, right? All right, now. In my game options, I set academics to be controlled by the staff, by my AI. It's the only thing I trigger over. You can trigger over whatever you want, but you know, like if you want to do a director of football style challenge, you can have the budget, the scheduling, uh, you can have all that. You can keep the coaching stuff, but let's say, hey, I want my athletic director to do scheduling. Click it over. But here's the tip, academics. You're only allocated so many hours in the season. Now, if you're the one putting in the hours, you can never go below zero. Okay? Makes sense. So this is a little this is a little cheat in the game. But if you put hours in, you can see we're sitting at negative five. How did that happen? Well, RC, you said we can't go below zero. That's right. You as a human owner cannot. But for some reason, don't know why, but for some reason, if you're putting in hours for study hall, then your AI, because they're the ones designated to control it, they will also put hours in. And eventually you will get into the negative. So you actually get bonus hours for your study halls. So that's why I leave the academics on for the AI is to get those extra bonus hours. Don't know if it really helps, but it can't hurt because I've got a lot of dumb players on my team. Uh, now, because we're in a new week now with new hours being allocated, but I'm already in the negatives, I can't do anything with that. So when you get in the early weeks, again, you have to spread the hours out because you only get, I think it's 80 hours. I could be wrong on that, but you only get 80 hours for the whole season. For the whole season so uh, use use what you need for your players that first week use what you need the second week but when you get to the third time use everything because now you can see coming into the fourth time for study hall i'm in the negative so if i would have left hours on the board it would use those and only go to zero but being that i used them all last episode, I think it was last episode, the game somehow goes into the negatives here. So you get a little little benefit. So that's the tip. You know, that's how to get some free study hall hours. Uh, so hey, that was worth the price of admission. <laughs> I hope. Anyway, uh, let's go back up. The way that I did this episode where I kind of already did the games, I think think that's how we're going to go from now on. Now, a couple of you guys are watching this pretty regularly. So if you have any thoughts, if there's a particular way you'd like to see it done, if you'd like me to tweak it any on how I'm presenting the games, let me know in the comments. Um, and I will certainly look at that because being that I can't do like football manager and play the match and play the game out, really the only thing to do is to show you the box score. Um, I could show you the game log, but honestly, like here's our game log. I don't think anybody wants to sit there and have me read through all of this for a video. 
I'm going on the assumption that the answer to that would be no. So really looking at the box score is the only thing we can do. But if you have if you have some suggestions or ways that you'd like to see it done or that you think would be better, I am open for your suggestions. Hit me up in the comments on that. By the way, don't forget to hit the like button for the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell because I do have daily content on my channel. Thanks so much. All right, we are going to get into week nine now. I've already gone through all of this. Uh, defensive strategies is the only thing I hadn't set. And if you'd like to see other conferences, if you have a favorite team, again, I'm a small enough channel. There's a few of you guys that are commenting on these videos, so I could probably accommodate a couple of you. Uh, you know, if it grows and, you know, I have more than a couple of people, I probably won't be able to do that. But uh, hey, we'll see. All right, we are playing on the road at North Texas, and I have an issue. All right, special team coverage. All right, we got the depth chart fixed, and a ten to three defeat. That's disappointing. We're still we're still alive to go to a bowl at six and six. Problem is, we have to run the table now. Not sure that's gonna happen. But again, that's okay. 255 yards for us, 316 allowed. We really need to beef up our defense and improve our... We, we need a better team. <laughs> uh, 75 yards rushing, only 2.4 per carry. 17 point... What was I just looking at? That pop-up. 17 of 40 and 4.5 per pass. Not a good outing. 0 for 2 in the red zone. That's not good. We had one interception, one fumble. Williams was 17 out of 40, so he took every pass like normal. 180 yards. Scott, 3.4 yards of carry. And here's where this is see, this again is where we're we're having issues. Williams took all 12 carries. So I also want to try to shorten these up, but you know, the first season I tried to do it more as a tutorial and then we kind of ramp up the pace. But let's try to do one more outing. So what I want to do is check our emails. Uh, do we have a game this week? Do we actually play? No, we don't. Okay, so we'll bypass this week. Let's jump in and look at the polls because that's probably something you guys would like to see. Uh, Tennessee at 9-0, and number one in the nation. UCLA, Florida State, Oklahoma, LSU, Georgia, Oregon State, Michigan, Miami, and Florida rounding out the top 10. Uh, you can see Florida's the only team in there with two losses. Syracuse in the Big East is unbeaten, not getting a lot of love in the polls. But a win over Pittsburgh would probably help them jump up. Anybody else looking really good? New Mexico at 8-0 from the Mountain West Conference. Uh, again, you know, one of those lower prestige conferences, uh, not getting the love in the polls, but they're up there. And then you can see a lot of three-loss teams down here in the bottom. And that's something that you'll find. It's very realistic. Let's say that I was unbeaten. We still wouldn't be in the top 25. You know, we're too small a prestige program to get any votes. So. Don't freak out if that happens to you. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. Then you can look at the Gray Dog. Uh, this is the uh, for the uh, championship. This is the rankings, and you can see how they're broken out by votes uh, and the computer software um, system. This is, and we have it set up on the based on the old BCS style. So I think that's what we did. All right, so let's jump in here. We're going to delete that. I'm going to bring in um, this James Spence guy. He is a two-star quarterback. Remember what I said about when you get the, the visits, they, they're only in the home game weeks, and you get three options. The way that the, it's presented to you in the email, the lowest one, the third one in the list, is always going to be your highest ranked player nationally. May not be the player you want to bring in, though. Just depends. A couple of those weeks, I brought in a cornerback because I wanted somebody in the secondary. I consider that a, a major need position. So, but that's my my decision to do that. 
All right, let's go ahead and we're going to keep Williams in there. Now, this is another thing that will happen, and this happens in the same week. You'll notice Owens is showing up, and he's red. Well, what's interesting, red is academic suspension. He should not be eligible to play, but for some reason, the game in this particular week will let, I think because it's a week early, and it's always done this. So if you if you do your depth chart, that guy will come back in to your depth chart. Uh, so there's another tip in this one. And you can see we've got quite a we've got another guy, Street, coming in at D, at defensive end and nose tackle. Uh, so that's uh that is a tip I had forgotten about that. I I I know it, but just forgot about it. Uh, but there it is in red and white. <laughs> All right, so let's think about what we want to do here. So we've been using the playbook, right? Now, the problem is, and this is where the video could get long because I like to ramble and, and think things out, and that way you guys can kind of understand my rationale. We could do a couple of things here. So right now we've got no long passing, which is what I want. And I am going to download a playbook for, I hope, next season. But right now, because of where we're at in the online league that I play in, I can't access the playbooks. You actually have to be able to get into the playbook section of the season to export it and then import it into another save in your file. Uh, we're in recruiting, and so that's shut off right now, so I can't get to it. And I don't want to go through the hassle of creating another playbook uh, for something that I've been basically tweaking for 16 years. Um, can't be bothered, honestly. So we're going to go with the default. Now, here's the thought. So we know that, let's look at our depth chart. And this is really, the only position I really worry about this is quarterback. So we know Williams is the better passer, right? And if we look at his stats, he's got a 48.5% completion percentage compared to 38.8. Fair enough. They both have four touchdowns. He's having more yards per attempt. But we also know that Faust is by far the better runner. And we can see that here. One and a half yard per carry compared to seven and a half yards. So we've got to decide. If we want to pass, do we just do away with the running? Or is Faust a big enough threat to get away to, to make it worth our while to make him our primary quarterback to where he can run all the time? Now, if we do that there and save that, right? And then we go back into the game plan, then what I might want to do is Go into the playbook, and let's take a look at his plays. So he's aver that's an inside run, four yards a carry. Inside run, four yards a carry. And then outside run, three and a half, four losses on these. Two big plays, one loss. Two big plays, three losses. Okay. So I am trying to figure out, so what we can do is we can go to strategies, right? Instead of using the playbook, we could you go back to using strategies. Let's do that. And then I don't want my fullback carrying any. And let's go 60-40. And I want to go 70, 30, 0 there. Remember, they have to equal 100. Okay. So now you can see we're setting our quarterback to run more. And let's target the running backs more, screen passes, things of that nature. And let's go a little bit more to the tight end here. Now, the problem with this is now I don't have any control over 
Well, yeah, actually, I do. I do. So, we've got our game plan, right? So, let's do this. Let's go to an inside run oriented. I'm going to go through and zero out all of my long passing. Now, again, these all have to equal 100%. Now, again, this is not a playbook that I've had developed. I've never, you know, these are some I'm setting off the top of my head. Um, so we, let's go. We've got a, a running back is one of our best players, Scott. And we've got the quarterback that can run but not pass. So what I've done is basically anything inside of six yards to go, I've got a predominance of running, 75% rush to 25% pass. Even on the longers, it's 35% run, 65% pass on greater than 12 yards to go, right? So our quarterback should run more. Uh, actually, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to 80% now for my start for the regular. Short yardage is still going to be 100 and I'm just kind of thinking this as we go. So Faust will now be both regular and short yardage, right? We've got it geared to be more run-oriented, which takes advantage of his running ability. I don't know how that's going to work because I've never really done a run-oriented offense in my life. <laughs> I like to throw the ball, as I said. All right, so we've got some guys that are going to be playing for the first time in a while due to the little glitch in the game that brings academically suspended players back early this point of the season. We've tweaked our formation. We've gone back to the formation strategies uh, for instead of the playbook. Let's see what's going to happen. Well, we got slaughtered. We did play Kent State. They're pretty good. I think they're, they're going to win our league, I think. 34-17. Now, Scott ran 27 times for 92 yards. Let's check the box score. So only 15 first downs, only 97 yards rushing, two and a half yards a carry. That's not stellar. Now, the other thing is because, well, let's, let's check out how he, how he did. So 27 for 92, 3.4 yards a carry. Faust only had four for 20 yards. Williams had was four of six, 13 of 22. What I hope you can see here is how you can adjust things to kind of try to get it. Now, now we have to go in and fiddle with it if that's what we want to do. Now, Owens had five catches for 99 yards, almost 20 yards a catch. I really, with him back from suspension being one of our better players, I really want him playing and being a part of our attack. So I'm going to go back to the other tactic, the tactic. I'm thinking football manager again, but we're going to go back to the other option that we had with the passing and uh, using the playbook. Now, because we've advanced to week 12, I want to look at the extra hours and you can see they've at, we're, we've gone from negative five to negative 10. I haven't touched anything. So the game continues to utilize a few points, not a lot, but you know that gives each one. You know, there's some points going into these guys, evidently, to help us out. So it can't hurt, right? All right. Well, that's what we're going to do for next episode. I'm going to go back to the passing attack just because it's what I like. Williams appears to be the better passer. Faust is a senior. Williams is a sophomore. So we want him to play so he can develop uh, if he does. Let's take a look at our staff. Offensive coordinator, developing players. He sucks. So basically nobody will develop under this guy. I mean, he, he may go from a 2 slash 5 to a 3 slash 5 over the next two years. Um, but I'm going to fire this guy in the offseason unless I just can't afford anybody. But yeah, he's going to get fired. That guy's going to get fired. And that guy's only a hundred thousand. That's a steal. So we'll keep him for sure. But I'm going to be going after new coaches this year that can do a combination of scouting and developing because it's their scouting abilities 
that give you a better indicator during recruiting as to how good players are. So you kind of want a mixture of good scouting ability and good development. What you'd love is the guys that can do it all and have blue or green ratings in every category. But we're paying this guy three seventy five. A guy with blues and greens across the board is going to cost us the max, which is seven hundred thousand, and I can't afford that. So we can't do that. So we'll have to find a happy median for next season. All right. Well, let, next episode then we'll come back. We'll finish out the regular season. There are four weeks left, and I'm not. Ex- uh, in fact, we're at nine games, so we are not going to be bowl eligible. Doesn't mean that we can't reach a bowl because remember, with all the bowl games there are, sometimes a five win team will get in if there's not enough six win teams to take up all the slots. That typically happens in the bigger conferences. Uh, so you might have like an Illinois or an Indiana in the Big Ten or, or uh, an Oregon State in the Pac 12. Uh, Sun Belt, you you only have one or two teams that are going to reach a bowl. So if you're if you're not up in those top two, you got no shot. So I'm anxious to put the season behind me and move on to recruiting. And uh, so let's work on that next episode. We'll finish out the season, and then I can get into recruiting and uh, hiring some new staff, my own guys. And we'll go from there. So, again, hit that like button for me. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Remember, if you got any input on the on the series, let me know down in the comments. I love reading those. And we will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.